stuff, but Kylie does have like the starting out ratios where her eyes, her nose and her lips are close enough in proximity. It's complicated, but you have to have a certain amount of distance or no distance or little distance around your features um, to create beauty. So she started out in, with a face that was already pretty, and then they made her like beautiful, like what we think of as today, someone being beautiful, like today's beauty, basically. So yeah, so she's had most of her face done, but the things that you can't change, um, like the eye distance, she didn't need, she had it already. She had a good starting out point. Hey guys, welcome to the Tom Ward Show where we talk to the most successful people in the world. We're here with Lori Hill who spent her entire life entrenched in the world of beauty, makeup, and most of all, plastic surgery. She has a unique access to the world of plastic surgeons to her own private network of friends and associates who share their wisdom and knowledge with her. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Yeah, this is fun. I'm glad you did this. That you were. Um, I reached out to uh, you know people who follow me and you know just looking for you know guest suggestions. You know, I do a guest show, so you always want to know who to book next. And your name came up a bunch. I got like a list of like 200 people. Wow. I'm kind of going through them, and I didn't. I didn't know your content at all. That, that kind of wasn't my kind of content. I watch, and then I was, was watching it, and then I just. I just fell down the rabbit hole and then I'm watching, yeah. you know, celebrities the, who got plastic surgeries. And now I'm learning about theirs. Then I'm going into celebrities who didn't get plastic surgeries. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's cool. And going through the, there. So it was very fun. So I recommend everyone check out her channel. Um, so there's a lot I want to talk to you about. I want to talk about kind of how you ended up here. I wanted to talk about some trends um, in surgery. I want to talk about Ex- Ozempic. Um, but you're a creator like myself and as a creator, you got to hit them now while they're here. You can't wait a half hour to give them the good stuff. Right. Right. So people love to hear about, um, and I look at your content too. It seems like by far the most popular content is when you talk about celebrity, um, plastic surgeries. We've got Ariana. Let's go to Ariana. It's funny. I have it when I look at this. I know Ariana because I've got two daughters. I've got a four year old and an eight year old. Aww. And the eight year old watches, and I didn't even realize it was her, an, an old Nickelodeon show. And I'm spacing on the name, but you know, she was a Nickelodeon kid. It yeah. was a show. She's got like a weird voice and stuff. I didn't even recognize. I probably have watched 20 episodes of my daughter and I didn't even make the connection that that was Ariana Grande. Yeah. So I saw her on the on the credits one day. I I was shocked. I didn't believe it. Yeah. But that was the same. That was her. Yeah. Significant work done. Yeah. For, a for sure. So so yeah, in the show she looked like the fir- like the first one there. Mm-hmm. You know, the with the cur- cute kid curly hair yeah. and very First of all, talk about that picture. To me, I don't know the eye rate, the eye spacing. You correct me if I'm wrong. That looks pretty good to me. She looks like a cute kid. Yeah. Does she have a good framework like you talked about before? Yeah, she did. Um, or she does. I don't know if, I mean, me personally, I don't know if I would have been able to predict that she would look like the last picture. Just you know, mm-hmm. being that because I'm like, wow. So part of me is. Part of me, or I think she had some really good surgeons, like really good. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because they were able to do work. They were able to see basically like a different face. <laughs> like, I mean, they've changed her a lot, a lot. And they. A lot. I mean, that's an understatement. She looks like a different person. Yeah, I mean, she totally does. So even for me, like, sometimes I consult, you know, people come and ask me like for consultations and they'll show me kind of like their before face and they'll say, what do you think would make me look prettier or better? I don't do this often, but I have, I don't think that I would have been able to see that before photo of Ariana and then thought of all those procedures to make her end up like that. Like this is a lot of plastic surgery, allegedly. (laughs) 
Yeah, it, she, and she looks. I mean, she looks beautiful. Yeah. So how do you get there? I mean, I'm sure there's. I'm sure. Have you done a video on Ariana? Yeah, I've done several. Like, I think I've done like three or four. So <laughs> that's a lot. The ground to cover. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. We don't have to go that in depth, but I, I really, again, recommend everyone going to her channel and kind of watching all these in depth because we don't have a lot of time to spend on each celebrity. But um, she really goes in depth on kind of what the procedures are um, and everything. So I, I suggest going to check those out. But yeah. since we got maybe five minutes on Ariana, yeah. I take us through the highlights. Yeah. So, I mean... They did some like basic plastic surgery. Like they, I can tell they started out with like a rhinoplasty to see where that where that went. Um, so I'm going to frame this in the sense of like beauty standards in Hollywood. It, they're just very different. So I think mm -hmm. when, and a lot of singers have a lot of plastic surgery. Um, and so. The chin is something that I think is cute. I don't, I wouldn't have changed it, but I know, I know that that's one of the things they went after for her because she had a very prominent chin and it looked oh, yeah. to have been shaved down and then implants added to square out her chin. Cause in that last photo, you see it, you don't see the pointy chin anymore. I, I, you know, it's funny. You're, you're good. You've, you've done this before because I would have never noticed. But now when I look now, it's like, oh my God, it's a totally different chin. Now, when you, when you said what you had done, I just, my hands went to my head because it sounds very painful when yeah. you're talking about shaving bone down. And is yeah. that literally what they do? Yes. With a bone saw, you're asleep and they can reshape your chin. And it looks like they took off a good four, five mil millimeters. Yeah. Like, okay. And then added, but then they added like kind of the pre jowl implants, which they're, they go on the jawline next to the chin. So they don't go on the chin cause that would make more bulk to the chin, but they go on the sides of the chin so that, so not only now is the chin smaller, but it's rounded and squared out, like the round and then the square at the jawline. So let's basically phrase it like this. They shaved the bone down, then they rebuilt her jaw to be um, a different shape. How painful, what's the, I, I, I just had surgery recently mm -hmm. and recovery is no joke. Um, but what's recovery like this for something? I mean, do you wake up when the meds wear off in pain? I'm, yeah. It sounds like you would, right? Yeah. It's huge, especially for jaw implants because they have, they put them in through the mouth. So they have to cut the, the ginger, the, the gum, the mucosa and stitch it. You know, they put in the jaw implants and they stitch it back up. The recovery is a good month. And that's the thing. I think they did it when she was younger because it's just an easy, it's easier to recover when you're younger. Um, it seems kind of weird, right? That they would do all this stuff, but like there's a lot of money riding on these people, like especially singers. So yeah. they would invest, you know, they, I mean, I know she comes from money, but like the powers that be around her would invest in her like this. They would like this is that important that she look a certain way. Wow, incredible! Mm -hmm. It's like an she's an investment, and they're putting money into her. You know, she's a, well. Yeah, at the end of the day, she's a product, yeah. right? And she's, yeah. you know, you want to market that product is and appeal to as many people as you can. Yes. And her face, let's face it, her face, her body, that is. And her voice, obviously, the voice the voice should be a hundred percent of the product, right? But right. unfortunately, it's not. It may, it's a. It seems like every year it's a smaller and smaller, yeah. you know, portion of that singer's product. You know, where Aretha Franklin, you know, I think this is the greatest, you know, yeah. singer of all time, male or female. You know, she wasn't winning beauty awards, right? Right. right. But her talent was so off the chart, no one cared what she looked like. Yeah. You know, now would be if she was getting in the game, it would be a totally different story. Yes, I agree with you. And I wish it was still just about the voice, but because we have so 
much more opportunity, like social media and everything to be seen that I just wonder, sure. I don't know. I don't know if we'll have like a singer that's just completely natural, you know? For sure. Yeah. So what else we got? What else are we looking at? Um, so one of the things she did, that I think is interesting is like her eyes. So her eyes are good, but they're not the long eyes, like long horizontal eyes is kind of what I was, is the gold standard. Um, where the eyes, like they kind of go, you know, they're long. Um, okay. yeah. Um, hers are a little short. Like when you look like this, hers are a little short. So what they okay. did, I think is they did what's called a lateral canthoplasty where they take the eye corners, they cut a little and they stretch them. And that is, you can't see it in the middle photo. I think she has it by the last photo. Her eyes got okay. longer. Um, that helps a lot. And then they arch the brows up. And one of the things she had, which failed, was a brow lift. And she had the kind of brow lift that um, picks up the medial brow, so like right here, and raises them, which was the kiss of death for her. Because when you do that, you always look surprised. I don't know if maybe you can bring up a photo of her where her, if you look up Ariana Grande, um, brows, you'll, you'll find a lot of photos of her brows looking uneven and uh -huh. they've tried, they've, you can tell they've tried to repair it and I don't know if they've been successful yet. So a lot of people look at that picture and say she's making like a face and she's raising her brows. She might be raising her brows, but there's other photos actually do the click the arrows and see what mm -hmm. comes up. Sure. If you can. Okay. I want to make sure she's not raising her brows in the photo because um, people might think that's it's the only. Oh, <laughs> someone. Well, hold on. But yes, I can see what you're talking about. Yeah, the brow is higher. Yeah. So that, that she's been chasing that brow uneven brow situation for a while now because she had a brow lift that. And I asked the surgeon, like I went to a plastic surgery recently, and I was like maybe I need a brow lift, you know, cause I wasn't sure. And you know, I'm older and stuff. And he's like, do you want to look perpetually surprised? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and cause if you lift this part of the brow, that's what happens. If you lift here, mm -hmm. it's okay. But they lift okay. here and that. Gotcha. And that's when you see, and when you combine that with uh, Botox, you look, <laughs> surprised and frightened at the same time if you have the brow list and there's no there's no movement in your face at all it's a bizarre look that i've seen i've seen many many times yeah yeah no i've seen it too but I, what that is this happened to her early on so it's like oh you know like so, so just to be clear so is the second photo is that good so she got the brow lift is that a good brow lift i mean it looks okay to me um, no. So the photo we're looking at right now. Yeah, yeah. The problem happened. Well, the problem is that I don't have her whole face. When you see, if you look up Ariana Grande, uneven eyebrows, you'll see there what we're talking about. All right, let's not do let's do that problem. right now. Okay. All right. So it's not just the problem with looking surprised. That that probably could could have been remedied. <laughs> Yeah, so that brow lift, it's just uneven. It's an uneven, she looks surprised and one brow is doing one thing and one brow is doing another. You could see it better with full on photos where the face is completely looking at the screen. But I mean, this is probably good enough too. Uh, so I see what you're saying. So on, on her right, on our, our left, what we're looking at, uh -huh. that one is kind of like <laughs> pointed yeah. upwards and yeah. the other one's kind of more Par more even it's more par yeah. parallel yeah okay and, brow, and like brat we as like humans we're used to seeing asymmetries in faces it's not a problem it's not like you have to be completely symmetrical even to be good looking it's it's mm -hmm. not a thing but like there are variations in brows that we're okay with seeing but some variations are just a little like they tell our brain oh something's off you know and this variation it's, it's kind of that. So did she fix it or is she walking around with two <laughs> different like eyebrows? I don't think she's fixed it. Oh, it is. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So do you have anything else to talk about Ariana? I think Ariana's beautiful. I think despite the, the brow lift, it doesn't matter. Like she's had other procedures done. So it's camouflaged some of the, the unevenness of the brows. Um, I just, I guess for her, I just do worry about maybe she's not going to, she's, she's going to do a little too much or she's there already, but she's still beautiful. So it's her face. So, okay, now let's get into, all right, let's stop the share. Let's get real, Lori. Let's get real, all right? Enough having fun with celebrities. Now, when okay. I look at her, and until you pointed the, the eyebrows out, now every time I see her, I want to look at her eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> right? But when I see her, I see a beautiful young woman, okay? I, yeah. To me, to a lay person, maybe women who have been looking at surgeries or men who have been looking at surgeries are more yeah. tuned into this than I am. Okay. But to me, I go, I know I live in LA. Okay. <laughs> you know, I interview celebrities. Okay, yeah. So I, 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 look, yeah. I, have part, I, I know what's going on. Right. I understand that. Yeah. So I know there's something going on behind the scenes to make her look this drastically right. different than when I saw her on the kid show with my daughter. So I know there's been procedures, yeah. but to me, she looks like it looks. Oh, it looks like good work. You know, it's oh, smooth. Yeah. It's it's professional. How hard is it to stop when you're ahead? So, forget the brow lift. Maybe okay. I want to correct. Maybe she figures the brows out, right? Yeah. How hard is it to just go? All right, I'm good now. Once you're this far it's into hard. it. Yeah, it's hard, especially because they're in that environment of having to look better and better and better you know so i think a lot of times they push themselves to do more uh people's number one request of course is kylie um she is probably most public about this or it seems like she gets commented on the most before i pull up a picture of her any reason why do you think like what makes people obsessed with kylie in every move she's made I think because she had such a metamorphosis from being someone who was a, like a regular pretty girl. And then she kind of became like this glamorous figure within a very glamorous family. So I think people are obsessed when people change and kind of like up level their looks. For sure. So let's see her. Hold on. Let us see. So, I mean, we've all seen plenty of videos like this. So this is like one of the, you know, good examples of, you know, things we've seen on Instagram. We see these things all the time. And yeah, I mean, there's no ignoring it. You go through and, you know, things changed a lot, you know? Yeah. So why don't you go through, I mean, it's, I'm sure there's been a lot of procedures, but why don't you take us through some that, um, you know, the ones you want to talk about? Yeah, so sometime around age like 16, 17, I believe it was, she had a rhinoplasty and there was also, um, I believe it was an upper blepharoplasty and the upper bleph is like where you remove skin and, and tissue from the upper eyelid. And what happened was hers failed and what it gave her it was a good accident it gave her kind of like a sultry eye effect um let me see what photo represents that the best probably if you move your um you want to go down move down a bit yeah okay a little bit. I want. I think it's the bottom row. Yeah, there you go. So, okay. yeah. So, there in the in. If these photos are correct, because these aren't mine, my photos. Mm -hmm. You have to be really careful with um, years because people will put like a photo with the wrong year all the time. Oh, uh, so, okay. Yeah, all the time. So that's part of my work. It, why it takes like hours, sometimes upwards of forty hours, is where. I have a co-researcher and we're checking the years and making sure we have lots of photos from that same year to like validate that that's when it happened. But for your audience, basically 
think of wow. it as being in her late teens. That's okay. around the time it happened where she had upper blepharoplasty that caused her eyes to do something called brow compensation where the eyes try to the eyebrows try to open up her eyes more so she can see afterwards and this is something that happens it's just like with for her it looks really nice it gave her a sultry look so i thought that was really interesting Lori, what what year are we talking about on this kind of slideshow where you see it like so I can't really tell because her glasses, but it looks like it could have been 2019, at least from your charts. Okay. Yeah. But I have it in all my videos. Like I have the, you know, 2010, 2015 yeah. kind of onwards. What, what is that? I mean, is that like just yeah. lip fillers and stuff or is there something more to it? Yeah. A lot is made about her lip fillers, but I feel like, and she's had a lot of lip filling, but I feel like the bigger procedures kind of got missed because of the lips. Um, oh. Yeah. So I think she had cheek implants placed. I think she had significant facial implants placed. What does that mean, facial implants? Yeah. So that's like a, sil a hard silicone implant that, you know, they've, they've been doing it for probably over a century now, but it's, you know, it's not very well known. But um, yeah, they'll put in like a hard silicone um, piece to shape mm -hmm. the cheekbones to make them look different, or they'll put in a chin implant. I think for Kylie, there was cheek implants and there was a chin implant. And I believe there was also jaw implants. Um, wow. yeah, this is all to like make the face look more, I guess, model-esque, you know, so yeah, like kind of more structured, less soft, more gla glamorous basically. Okay. Yeah. What, what? So of course I point <laughs> I point out basically the obvious one. You know, Tom, the lips. You know, let's not worry about the lips. There's a million other ones to get to. What are yeah. the other? Like, what are the other big ones? Um, well, I mean, if we don't look at her full body, right? You you got to talk about uh, you know a BBL implant. Is that pretty obvious or no? There's something else going on there. Um. Yeah, she's definitely had a lot of body work. So like her. Basically, what you what's important with Kylie is like she had the potential to be beautiful. Like not mm -hmm. everybody has that, so I think that's missed a lot in the conversation about plastic surgery because I don't think surgeons basically want to tell people that you're chasing something you can't have. But Kylie sure. does have like the starting out ratios where her eyes, her nose, and her lips are close enough in proximity. It's complicated, but you have to have a certain amount of distance or no distance or little distance around your features um, to create beauty. So she started out in, with a face that was already pretty, and then they made her like beautiful, like what we think of as today, someone being beautiful, like today's beauty, basically. So yeah, so she's had most of her face done, but the things that you can't change um, like the eye distance, she didn't need, she had it already. She had a good starting out point. What do they call that? And I know exactly what you're talking about. I do know that ratio and I've seen it and they, I, I love this. I mean, I love this kind of content. We all love this kind of content yeah. where they show like uh, Brad Pitt's always shows up on the list. I can't think of anybody else, but they it's like the ratio. Is that what they call it? Where it's like, you know, your eyes need to be like everything symmetrical, basically in a certain distance. Like, yeah, is that basically what, the, what we're talking about? Yeah, it's more distance related than symmetry related because plastic surgeons can a lot of times fix symmetry, but they can't fix how far apart or how close together your eyes are. Probably the most important feature for someone is their eyes. Um, contrary to all other popular beliefs, yeah. it's the eyes that create the beauty. Wow. Mm -hmm. It starts yeah. with the eyes. Who would have thought? Who thinks about the eyes? You know, I mean, look, we all have we all have something we like to work on, including me. We everybody has something, right? I don't like my nose. I don't like my butt. I don't like whatever, right? Yeah. And you just zero in on that, and that'll fix everything. And I'll look, you know, I'll be a model. But no one thinks about, you know, you can change certain things. 
but that's not going to change your overall appearance too much, right? Exactly. And and that's why when you see people who have had like jaw surgery or it's called orthognathic surgery where they can move the upper and the lower jaw, it's such a shockingly big change because you're changing structure. But one thing that you can't change is eye eye sockets. Like you can't change how long or how short your eye sockets are. And it's important because that's that's she started out with with good good eye sockets. I know it's nope. funny, but <laughs> yeah. That's funny. It's like, you know, we, women will compliment other women on a million things, but I've never heard, you've got great eye sockets. <laughs> right, right. Well, usually you hear it as you have you have great eyes. Or great eyes. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. of course. I, I mean, I never thought about eye sockets. That's funny. Yeah. Is there any other major things on, on Kylie that um, we need to talk about? Um, I mean, I guess my opinion in general is that like, I really think she's so beautiful now. Like, For sure. and I think the level of beauty that she has at this point can really only be achieved with plastic surgery because she's just gone from, you know, like kind of the first upgrade was when she did all that stuff in 2018, 2019, 2020. And then it's like, she's went up above and beyond to where she didn't even have to go there. You know, she did so much extra stuff in my opinion. And this is just me eyeballing what she's done that I'm like, whoa, she's been through a lot of surgery allegedly. Yeah. And so before we get to the other celebrities and we're, we're going a little deeper here, right? Um, what about trends? Because again, I don't know anything about anything. Okay, so let me let me say that again. But what I notice now is I don't when I'm on Instagram and stuff, I don't see as many, um, you know, big huge lips and you know the big butts and stuff. What happens when things? Because I, I just saw talk about the removal too, right? Because I just uh, read when I was researching this, uh, I fell down the rabbit hole of celebrity yeah. plastic surgery. <laughs> and your yeah. channel helped a lot, but I think it was Kim and I don't know what other Kardashian or Jenner were getting the the um, the the butts removed. Uh, so do people need to think? Because when I was when I was looking at that, I'm thinking, and when I look on Instagram and stuff, I'm like, yeah, that doesn't seem like it's the the in look anymore, whatever the, that means, you know? So do, do people need to think about, Hey, is this going to be cool in five years, in 10 years? Is this still a look I want? Um, and do people do that? Okay. Yeah. So starting off with like trends. So it's very hard for me to say this to like younger people, but like, don't do your, don't make your plastic surgery decisions based on trends. And I know it's very tempting, but making a decision based on a trend is following kind of our natural instinct of wanting to be like everyone else. And that will lead you astray because over time, things change, right? Trends change, the looks change. So better to go for a classic, what looks good on you type of beauty and what makes sense for your face so you're still an individual because we have a huge problem right now where everyone looks the same. Like, yes. Yeah. Like Kim Kardashian looks like Megan Fox. Like I have to look very closely and I'm someone who notices details. I have to look and see if the person I'm looking at has blue eyes or brown eyes. And that's how <laughs> I figure out if it's Megan Fox or Kim Kardashian. And that's kind of huge because they didn't start out looking like each other. And I don't know, I don't want to look like everybody else, but I guess it's hard too when you're hit over the head on Instagram all day and TikTok with girls with millions of followers who look a certain way. I guess it's kind of like FOMO. Well, hey, they're getting all the attention looking like this, so I guess I kind of have to, right? I think that's how the younger generation feels um, because that's they're only seeing one representation of beauty, whether they're black, white, or Asian. All the faces are starting to look similar because they're getting similar procedures. 
Yeah, for real. You're taking away like the you, you are taking away the in, individuality, whether it's a person's race or where they're from or whatever, um, and changing it to look like the other girl that I just swiped through on TikTok <laughs> two yeah. minutes ago. You know, and I want to get back to some more advice in a little bit too, um, especially to young people too, because um, we have a younger audience. Let's talk about Simon Cow because I got a lot of requests when I asked for celebrities and 95% were women. I go, buh, 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 buh. we're equal opportunity at the Tom Ward show. Let's look at some guys, right? So Simon was probably, we got a lot from Zach Efron, Tom Brady, um, and Simon were the most popular, but um, let's do Simon. Okay. Okay. So what are we looking at here? That he looks drastic, drastically different. He's got a creepy smile in one photo, which yeah. doesn't help. Yeah. But, but what are we looking at here? Yeah. So Simon, I mean, I do want to mention that as like a younger guy before he got mm -hmm. famous, he it looks to have been a nose job he had. So that was before anything else. There was he had his nose was a lot larger. It may be hard for you to find the before photo I have it in my video but um so that was his first procedure rhinoplasty when he was younger and then, okay yeah and then he he had Botox for about 10 years as he aged um and then this kind of weirder look like where he looks a little creepy you know I'm not yes sure. yeah what is that so a lot of times that creepy look comes from the lower eyelids being pulled down too much from a lower okay. blepharoplasty where they remove skin and fat from your lower lids. And you have to be really careful when you do any kind of eye work because changing the eyes has a huge impact on the way people see you. Sure. Yeah. We just talked about that, how important the eyes are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have to be so careful. And so it looks like he had an overly aggressive lower lid uh, blepharoplasty. And, okay. And then what that means is that they took out too much skin. And so now when he smiles or just when he, his face is at rest, you see more of the whites underneath his iris. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's kind of being pulled down. Like, you know, when you're a kid and you do this, <laughs> that's gonna be our thumbnail that picture right there okay. <laughs> i'm just kidding i would never do you dirty like that it's okay. it's okay but that's kind of what's happening is but the, is there something else because i'm looking at his face yeah. okay how about the cheeks look very different right is yeah. there something there yeah so then um as we move on through that uh, um, there was also like a very subtle brow lift i know a lot of people aren't going to be able to tell that but there was there was a subtle brow lift um because he used to have very heavy brows and in that next photo they're they've lightened up a bit and it's a good brow lift but you just can't tell because of the lower lid distortion that's going on that everybody notices that ghoul like look instead of because <laughs> like if you cover up his if you just look at his brows and forehead, that looks like a young man. Just the brows and oh. and the hairline and the forehead. And yes, yeah, even the hair too. Yeah, looks like a young man. Yeah, it looks good. So, so yeah. So then, um, for the cheeks, you know, he's gotten filler over the years, and he's admitted to it. Um, and he said he went a bit too far. He said his own son had said something about it. So that's when he knew to stop doing it. So that, those cheeks, that's filler. Um, and then of course, like the cosmetic dentistry, you know, his teeth are very white. It's like shockingly white. Yes. And as someone who's like, I'm a former dental hygienist and my husband's a dentist. So the guide for teeth whiteness is they should never be whiter than your eyes. So, and that is your eyes are pretty white, and that is blinding. But let me ask you, okay, about teeth. I'm, I just did Invisalign. I got my teeth here. You know, I just got it off finally. Yeah. Um, but 
Thank you very, yeah. thank you very much. It's not like I did anything to help the world here. I just, you know, flossed and wore trays. I, but it's hard. It's hard. but I noticed teeth. I I noticed teeth a lot more than I did before. Before I never really noticed teeth like you would, right? Because yeah. you're, you know, you're in the business. But when I what? Why do people get their teeth to look like Simon's? I see. Do they call it the Hollywood smile? Like that's a thing, right? And it looks to me ridiculous. The teeth are big and straight and shockingly white. Like, what is up with that? Why is that a thing? Yeah, it's a, it's actually like it is a thing. It's called toilet bowl white. We call it in our house, <laughs> which is so gross. <laughs> yeah, like my teeth. I have I have cosmetic dentistry and. Sometimes I look at my teeth, I'm like, they could be whiter. But then I remember that, you know, it's it's meant to look natural and not to distract from your other features. So I don't know why celebrities do it. Some really fall prey to like dentists or cosmetic dentists who I don't know who is leading who. Sometimes I've heard, I mean, my husband has worked on some celebrities and sometimes they're asking for it, but it could also be the other way around, especially in Beverly Hill, where they're making smiles very white. For sure. So what do you do? Okay, so Simon's son says something to him about his face. Uh -huh. And he, he goes, all right, son, you're probably right. So he's got these giant chipmunk looking <laughs> cheeks. Yeah. And you said they're filler, right? So, okay, you fill them with something. Yeah. Can that come be removed and you go back to a normal cheek? Is that hard to do? You don't go back to a normal cheek, unfortunately, because the way the anatomy is, once you've filled in something to that extent. Okay, let's backtrack. Dermal filler, fi excuse me, dermal filler was created to fill in deficiencies, volume deficiencies but not to create features you don't already have. So if you don't have cheekbones that stick out the way his do, um, and, and you make, make that feature with filler, you've stretched out the skin envelope to the point where it likely won't rebound back to as tight as it was before. Okay. Right. So what he would probably, if you wanted to have, the cheeks gone, he would do, he would dissolve the filler and they would probably do like a mid facelift or, or a very high upper, a, a very high facelift. Okay. So you, the fillers, when I think fillers, I think lips too. So, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody gets lip, a bunch of lip filler. Yeah. Now what? Yeah. You know, now they should, they don't want big lips for whatever reason now. So now what, what do they do? If they dissolve the lip filler, if they had huge lips, they're going to have big, floppy, deflated lips afterwards. No, are you, are, that's what happens? Yeah, unfortunately. So you're stuck with them? Kind of. I mean, you could do like a lip lift. You could do some lip repair, but because I don't like, I don't do a lot of filler, so mm -hmm. I don't have a ton of experience. I know you could speak with like someone can speak with an injector who's more experienced in that. And they might have methods to go slowly deflating the lips. But okay. from what I've seen from the friends who have removed their lip filler, their lips are deflated looking for a long time. I mean, if not forever. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what, anything else on Simon? Uh, I think we, we analyzed his, I mean, anything with his ears are, are celebrities doing things with their ears. Did, did we miss anything? Chin? Has he done anything else? Um, well, back when I analyzed him, I think it was like 2022, he was starting to get that melted look and that could be from a lot of weight loss, but also, um, thermage, which sometimes will, thermage is like a skin treatment that acts on the facial fat and kind of gives you like a melted candle look. He might have gotten thermage. Okay. Yeah. So thermage, wh why do you get that again? So that's to tighten your skin. So he might have gotten it instead of having like a facelift. I don't know if he's recently had a facelift. I haven't looked at him this year, 
But okay. people get these non-invasive procedures in place of facelifts thinking that it's a good substitute. Some of them will stave off a facelift for a while, but some of them cause damage. And when they tighten, they're actually diminishing the facial fat. And one of those is Thermage. And it's Thermage is kind of credited allegedly for uh, Renee Zellweger's different look too. Oh, okay. That's what's going on. Okay. That's what, you know, that's what people think. So you have to be careful okay. with non-invasive procedures. <laughs> I asked you in an email before, and you you said you weren't sure, but take a guess for me, right? So uh -huh. it used to be, I don't know, probably 20 years ago, it would be older people looking at plastic surgeries, right? And probably all women, right? And that's changed now, men are yeah. too. But yeah. it, I wonder... Are more young people walking into those plastic surgeons' office than older people now? Do you think it's pretty even, or do you think it's swung where actually the younger people are in there more than the old people, you know, used to be? Yeah, well, my demographic is like eighteen through thirty-four, and oh, so okay. I would say the yeah, I would say the people who it's kind of like the meat of the curve is like yeah, like twenty-five through thirty-four is probably where they're doing a lot that age range. Wow, that's incredible yeah. to me. I Because, look, I'm, I'm not the, you know, handsomest guy in the world. There are things I would like to work on, right? I, you know, bag some for my eyes as I get older, right? So there's some things, right, you want to take care of. But I wouldn't have even, and who knows, maybe I will. But, you know, I'm 45 now. So... Yeah. So I had never thought about this pre, like, I don't know, 43 or 44. Um, yeah. What are the downsides of your main demos, 25 to 35? And by the way, that's also my main demo is 25 yeah. to 35 year old women. So that's exactly who's watching this. <laughs> Guys, I know you're there. People outside that yeah. demo, I love you too. Don't worry. I'm not in that demo. <laughs> We're all here together, right? But a large yeah. portion is, the, is that demo you just talked about. And they're the ones that have all of these questions right so yeah and i want to get in your story a little bit too uh, but before we what based on your experience right and i want to hear about your experience what would you tell that 22 year old probably woman or a guy watching your channel or asking all these questions or spending hours researching procedures what would you tell them I miss what would you tell and then you froze and then I heard 22. So Oh, okay. So so they're 22 and they're spending hours online looking at, you know, surgeries and they're watching your videos and they're looking at what all their favorite yeah. pop stars are doing this and that and they want everything now, of course, you know, cuz that's yeah. what we want, right? We want everything right now. Yeah, yeah. What would you tell yeah. what would you tell them? Do you have any advice? Yeah, I would tell them to get off of social media and enjoy their youth. <laughs> okay, that's not going to happen. So let's forget that. I really mean it. I just, I feel like the more face-to-face -face interactions we have with real people, you'll see like that <laughs> most people don't look like the people on Instagram, even in LA, which, you know, I told you, I go out often and even the, you know, there are definitely some beautiful people, but for sure, almost no one looks like those images on social media, yep. you know? I would literally tell them to get off social media and enjoy their youth. Like, that's what I would say. Don't have plastic surgery at that age. That's way too young. It's so funny. I, <laughs> I've, lived, I've interviewed 200 plus um, successful people, a lot of business people too, but also a lot of celebrities too. And I know before, you know, usually they'll, they'll arrive with hair and makeup done, of course, you know, but sometimes no, sometimes they'll get it done there on the spot or, yeah. you know, before there's position quite right in the chair as they want and before the lighting is exactly what they want and their people want. Right. So I get to see a lot of times yeah. the before and after. And I tell people mm -hmm. all the time it is camera trickery a lot. And, you know, yeah. so even with those surgeries, which I'm, I'm sure it's great work and stuff, even then, without yeah. the right environment, it they're not as good. But then somebody like, it was funny, I saw, I interviewed Sierra, Sierra 
right? The singer. Uh huh. And (laughs) it's funny. People ask me about her. I go, none of that is camera trickery. I go, she is beautiful. She rolls up. She's off camera. She's in bad lighting. She looks incredible no matter what. Yeah. You know? So some people are like that too. Yeah. But they're very rare. They're very rare. And you're probably not going to be in a room with one where anyone's comparing you to them. And that's the other thing you have to think. You're the only one comparing yourself. Yep. Yeah, you're never going to be taking a picture with your arm around Sierra and looking horrible because you're standing next to Sierra, right? It's just yeah. not. When's that going to ever happen? Never. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Or with your favorite influencer, you know, and and if it does happen, they're going to be saying, "Give me that photo so I can face tune it first before you post it." <laughs> <laughs> I started out interviewing influencers, and the just that's funny. You know, I want a picture for the thumbnail, or I want a picture for my social, right? You know, when I started out, I'm like, I, how, how long could this possibly take, right? Very soon I realized that it is not as simple as just taking a picture. You're right. Tom, send me the picture. I'll send it back to you. You know, I'll send it back to you tonight. Yeah. You know, we're taking the picture yeah. 20, 40 times. Oh, yeah. You know, and then looking at each picture and then positioning yeah. differently and stuff, too. So a lot of that, you know, I don't know the plastic surgery like you do, but I kind of see off camera what it looks like, too. And a lot of it yeah. is a lot of trickery, I would just call it. Yeah. And it, yeah, it is. And um, I mean, I'm friends. Most of my friends are YouTubers and. I feel like I'm sending them the photos I'm going to post all the time. You know, like, is this okay to post? And they're like, oh, my arm looks bad. Or, can you, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'll change minimal things. Like, I will change it because they're my friends. But yeah. every chance I have, I post unfiltered photos on Instagram. Every chance I have. Good for you. Even if I don't look that great. Because there's just too much. And maybe that's like some... It's an old term. Somebody said it was rich coming from me. Maybe it is rich coming from me that I would do that. But I'm like, where I can be natural, I try to, you know? I think that's I think it's a beautiful thing. And I wanna I wanna hear about your story. One thing we didn't get into is um, the people's number one question was I'm gonna see if I pronounce buckle it. Fat. Buckle fat removal. So let's yeah, hit that. Right. right. So yeah. I don't even know what that is. The person watching this will go, Tom, we all know what this is, okay? But for those of us who don't, yeah. explain first of all, what is it? Yeah, so it's the there's a there's some fat you have. I'm gonna try to do it in like really simple terms. Sure. That is like right under your cheekbones and I mean I can feel mine. It's right under here and it's it's a it's a fat pad. Go a little like you're, you go a little bit lower. Yeah, it's like right there. It's very cushiony. Okay, yeah, yeah. sure. Um, yeah, it's like you kind of bounce off of it. Yeah. Um, when you get really, really thin, some people have... Okay, let's backtrack. Some people have extra. So somebody... A good example of this is Selena Gomez. She kind of has a rounder face, and that buckle fat makes her look even cuter. I, I don't know. Yeah. She looks pretty to me. Like It's like, I don't know. But... She's an example of somebody who would have a little excess to remove. So when it's removed, you get more of a sculpted, upswept look. Okay. For some reason, this look, especially you get this look when you suck in. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the, the look, look they want. Everything. They want the hollow cheeks? The hollow cheeks, yeah. Okay, I got you. Okay. And that's what that, yeah. that's what that does. It does, but the, the the main thing people have to remember is if you don't have that bone structure underneath, it, you're just going to look too deflated and thin. Um, so a lot of celebrities are have done it, and not all of them have the bones underneath to support that hollow look. It always makes you look older, always. Really? So that's the risk, yes. So if you want to – there are people who want to look older. There are people who have looked like children their whole lives, and they're tired of it. And I totally understand that. I think Ariana Grande was one of like Selena Gomez. They just want to grow up um, and they they get it done and it looks good on them. But for the people who who don't want that effect, they shouldn't do it. Oh, okay. You can't reverse it. It's irreversible. Wow. Okay. They also, a lot of people want to know what are the risks associated with it? 
just that that it's, so, you, that it's irreversible yeah yeah well one of the risks is looking older another which if you don't want that you know don't do it mm -hmm. another risk is that um like you'll lose you'll lose that supportive structure because fat is a supportive structure too. So as you get older, you look even older. Like you look more drawn in as you age. Yeah, sure. So it's good for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. It's good for a couple of years. But once you hit that like late twenties, early thirties, you're going to want it back. Yep. Ozempic. Let's talk Ozempic. Okay. Right. That, that, that was the, that was the second most requested topic. All right. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's doing, I am a, I am personally, I'm a, I'm not even a man. I don't think at this point I'm in a house of girls. So oh, but I like this. I, I won't even say like, Oh, it's just my wife's and I'm watching. We're watching. I watch all every reality. I mean, um, real housewives franchise. I watch them all. I'm watching Potomac. I can't wait for Miami to come back, right? <laughs> uh, Orange County. And Orange County actually has two. Well, I just watched the reunion show. And I forget. I can never remember their names. But um, two women were larger. And then, you know, magically, they're thinner. It, it seems like no one, first of all, wants to fess up to their using Ozempic. <laughs> okay? That's number one, right? But I know I saw one of them. If she never exercises. They were on a spa trip one time, and she's literally she took a sandwich in the spa in the sauna with her because she was just hungry. I'm like, there's no way this is not this weight loss occurred in eight weeks unless we drastically changed her worldview. But okay, so I won't say they or did or did not have done it because that's none yeah, of my right, business, right? right? But no one wants to fess up. Okay, fine. What um. What are the risks? What do we got to know before we go get injected? Um, I really think that Ozempic Manjaro... Anna, did I freeze up? Let me just start. I'll ask the question again. So, all the celebrities are getting it. All our friends are getting it. They look skinny. They look good. What should we know before we get injected? Oh, I think that it's definitely just for people who need it. Um, so pre-diabetic people and then people who already have diabetes and people who have struggled with their weight their whole lives who aren't any of those things are the best candidates for it. Um, if you just have like five to 10 pounds to lose, like I don't think it's a good medication for that. Sure. Anybody, anybody can lose five or 10 pounds. Just little exercise changes in your diet you're, you're fine. yeah yeah but it's i'm sure a lot of people are tempted by it because everybody's so thin now so there you are okay oh you, it looks better now how you oh know. you know what my my camera my, my camera battery just died so now i'm on the mac camera that's fine oh okay, okay. that's weird yeah all right um, what did you ask me um so, so what are the um so what happens? So I get injected. Do I start losing weight quickly because I'm just not hungry? Like, how does it work? Yeah. So like it delays your stomach emptying. So the, your, the food you just ate is in your stomach longer than usual. So the stomach, you don't get the empty, I'm, I'm empty, fill me signals from the stomach wow, to the brain. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it changes your brain's focus on food. I think... It affects, I want to say the hippocampus. I'm not sure. It affects your brain, though, um, in the sense that you're not always thinking about what you're going to eat next. It quiets the food noise in your head, which is great for people who have struggled with their weight. For sure. Now, one of the risks I always hear about is um, it makes you look old. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Is that yeah. true? I mean, does it, does it give you a certain facial look after a while? Yeah, you can look a little bit deflated, a little drawn in. If you lose a large amount of weight, especially if you didn't need to, yeah, it, you can't. It can do that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm getting injected. I feel good. I'm not hungry. Food's in my stomach, mug or whatever. Who cares? I'm getting skinny. How long? How long does this last? Do I just have to keep this going forever? And when I stop, what happens? Yeah, when you stop, you gain the weight back. Um, yeah. So it is. It is something that you 
you kind of have to be on, you know, forever, I guess. Um, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know, but um, a family member of mine got on it, helped them a lot, but they've always struggled with their weight and they actually don't like that they have to be on it forever. And they're talking about doing like cycles, you know. Oh, okay. It seems like a safer way to do it, probably. Yeah, they just, you know, they don't like the idea of having to do a weekly injection and having it always kind of, what they said is that once they start gaining weight, they'll get back on it. I'm like, you know, that it's their body. So, but, yeah. <laughs> so finally, yeah. let's talk about you uh, before we get to like everywhere we should check you out. Um, you know, this is <laughs> a question that would require a long answer. So we could talk as long as you want, but you're super passionate about this. You had, you know, training in, in the dental, uh, you know, field, yeah. right? Your dad's a dentist, yeah. correct? Uh, my husband. Oh, your husband's a dentist. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you, you were in dentistry. You had to, you know, you trained to be in the, you know, in that. Yeah. I went to college for dental hygiene. Yeah. Oh, okay. So where did all this, where did all this come from and why? Yeah. So like I was a stay at home mom after I had like our son and I just wanted to do something. So I was on Instagram doing fashion and it was kind of just not very satisfying and fulfilling. And one day I was talking to a friend, um, who was talking about Bella Hadid and she was saying, she's so beautiful. And I said, yeah, she is. And she, you know, she's had plastic surgery. It was like, I said it very matter of fact. And this friend was shocked that she's had plastic surgery and the friend's smart, normal, you know, I'm like, really, you can't tell. Mm -hmm. Like I could name off the procedures. Like for her, it was pretty obvious and she couldn't tell. And I thought if there are people who, you know, are this smart, mature and whatever, and they feel bad about themselves because they're comparing themselves to like a celebrity who's had a lot of surgery, then, you know, there's definitely like younger people and lots of people in the world who don't know. So I should do, I just thought like, I should do some videos about that. Yeah. So that's all really I was trying to do. I honestly was just trying to help people. I was never trying to be like, um, negative, like about a celebrity having that stuff done. Cause I had pursued acting in LA. I know how it is. I know how, how much stress there is and pressure on your look. So it was just a way of informing people. Um, I I'm still shocked to this day that it was something that was considered so controversial. Cause I thought everyone knew, <laughs> I feel like better now because I feel like people do know now. So if I, I'm still going to be doing celebrity content, but if I start to get out of celebrity content a little bit, um, at least I'll do so knowing that now the world kind of knows, you know, before they really didn't know. So, which is crazy because yeah. it's, I guess it's so common, you know, the question now isn't have they had work done. It's like how many procedures and what procedures have they had done now? It's kind of yeah. just assumed when you see a beautiful celebrity, it's like, of course they have, they've had work done. Like no one looks like this, like naturally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's rare. It's rare. There are some maybe, you know, that have had minimal, but to get that perfected glam look, like there's just certain procedures that I can see that they've had. So, yeah. So what's the future of your channel? hold for us. I see you, you're doing, you're not just doing the celebrity, you know, what plastic surgery you're focusing on them. I see, you know, real things that like real people, you know, with skincare routines yeah. and things like that. What kind of content do you want to do now? What other content are you doing now? And what do you want to do more of in the future? Yeah. So like more like accessible things for people, because a lot of people can't afford plastic surgery. So more things that they, people can do to really see a difference in their skin. So skincare, some beauty. And I do like talking about the products that celebrities use because I think that's really interesting. So yeah, all of that. Okay. And where can we find you? And I also might be doing like a course in the future about how to find the right plastic surgeon. Cause I think a lot of people are confused about that and could need. Yes, to for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Don't just go to who recommended you or what you, you know what you see on Yelp. I think that would be very valuable. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I definitely want to do that. Yeah, you can find me on mostly on YouTube. I'm on Instagram too, and I'm on TikTok. Cool. But, you know, that's not a huge part of my following, but yeah. uh, Lori Hill, L O R R Y and H I L L. All right, we'll include links to everything below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. I, I learned a lot for, for sure. Uh, I think this was a great interview and I had fun. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. New interviews every Wednesday. We stream live Tuesday and Thursday nights. Thank you guys. You're the best.